Hello, this is Daniele Tetti. I am the CEO and CTO for B10 Professionals. And uh, today we will talk about modern Delphi architectures. Uh, I am an Embarcadero MVP. I'm offer for with my company, uh, consultancy trainings, design, development, and so on, on Embarcadero products, Delphi, C++ build their interbase, and uh, also other technologies. Their website is www.bitimeprofessionals.com. This is also uh, my blog, www.danielatetti.it. I am the lead developer and the founder of um, a set of open source projects. Some of them are really, really uh, popular. For example, Delphi MVC Framework, Delphi Redis Client, Delphi Stomp Client, Logger Pro, and so on. I am also a books author. In the last three years or so, I published uh, a couple of books named Delphi Cookbook, first and second edition, that you can find on Pocket Publishing or Amazon or O'Reilly or uh, iTunes and so on. So let's talk about uh, the modern architecture in Delphi. Uh, rapid application development or RAD is paradigm that is really high productive. Um, all the Delphi developers or C++ developers uh, know very well about this. But using the most modern architecture uh, results in a more robust application that are actually easier to maintain and debug. So the question that I'd like to uh, respond in this webinar is how to keep the RAD productivity improving at the same time maintaining and debugging. Let's talk about modern software architecture so that we can understand what modern software architecture is. Uh, modern software architecture application are SOA. So uh, they are service oriented. So they provide services to integrate it and are distributed and high scalable and also offer a well-defined APIs so that other applications can interact with uh, um, this uh, uh, system. Also, they are built to change instead of built to last. Uh, very often when I go to do consultancy, in Italy or in Europe or in the US, um, some people tell me that um, the application is so bad because the requirement uh, um, changed over the time. And so this is the justification because the, 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 the application is badly written. But this is not the justification because the requirement obviously changes. Uh, so you cannot blame the requirements because they are changing. You know that requirement will change. So your application, your architecture should be so flexible, then uh, correctly embrace the change, not to break upon the change. Also, such kind of applications provides a well-established separation of concern. So they try to respect the single responsibility principle and the open-close principle. Also, this kind of application provides data partitioning that fits architectural needs and not database monolithic. Uh, they do not house all data within a single database, so every kind of data goes to that database because there be many different data stores including relational database, NoSQL database, in-memory store, and so on. Also, this kind of application are loosely coupled. They are not monolithic. They are not highly coupled. Uh, each component is tied to the other in a very strong way. This is bad. Also, they integrate with a lot of system, other applications, message queues, message brokers, and message logs. Uh, many of these systems are uh, open source, as we know. Also, uh, an application developed with a modern architecture performs synchronous and also asynchronous processing. This is a very important because if you have a lot of data, uh, probably you... Um, you have to uh, to start long processing. You have to handle long processing so that your user should be able to just start the process and then when the data is, uh, is collected, when data is uh, elaborated, can uh, get a notification about this information. But this 
time, this elapsed time could be also two days or three hours of one week. So obviously this kind of processing must be in a synchronous, must be uh, implemented in a synchronous paradigm. Also, this kind of application are a mesh of a lot of different technology. You obviously can use Delphi, but also uh, Node.js server or a Redis uh, key value store or MongoDB for the SQL stuff or also Kafka Storm and so on, and many, many more other technologies. Also, they support integrating with cloud computing services. So now let's talk about what rapid application development is. Um, rapid application development is a software development technique that emphasizes uh, short development times, uh, maybe uh, 30 or 90 days or 120 days and so on, but they are short. A good RAD tool allows to write application with less line of code compared to a non-RAD tool. And this is um, a part where uh, really Delphi shines or in the market. Also, the technique usually is not good for developing complex application. It is not is not good. is is It is not impossible to um, develop complex application in a run style, but it's not good because the the bug is complex, uh, is not automatically tested, and so on. Uh, in fact, your organization may appropriately use the technique to develop a lower risk application or less complex application. But Delphi is not only RAD. In fact, Delphi is the best RAD tool on the market. All of us are certain about this uh, because it allows to build database application faster than any other general purpose development tool with a very high level of quality. However, Delphi RAD approach is perfect for uh, prototyping or to build application with low or middle complexity. Also, Delphi encourages but does not force you to use the RAD approach. This is particularly important. Uh, when I uh, go uh, in my consultancy job all over Italy and Europe and also outside, um, many programmers tell, told me that um, the application is so badly written because the requirement change over the time and then I use the, the, the normal RAD approach to uh, to cope with this. But Delphi encourages, but don't force you, doesn't force you to use the right approach. So you can really use the approach that you want. Delphi had a, 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 a right approach and also other approaches, okay? Delphi is a good citizen in the modern architecture application development, but is in, this is, it is uh, really important to have a good application architecture in mind, and not following blindly, blindly the RAD approach. Why? Because RAD um, has uh, bad sides. Uh, for example, uh, database metadata are reflected on the UI. These are bad things. All the field names in TDB. Uh, uh, something components. Also, the persistent field with all the metadata information gathered from the underlying query are not good. Also, there is not a single point to put all the business logic. Uh, so, you uh, have to have some business logic uh, under event tender of the forms, under data set events, uh, on database logic, so uh, store procedure triggers, and so on. Also, business logic is not easily testable automatically. This is one of big bad point of RAD. Also, business logic uh, is logic is hardly reusable, and is mixed with the UI code, and unit test is very hard, if not impossible, to do. So the question is, when I should stop to use RAD? Okay, there is not reason to stop to use a RAD approach as a well. whole. Uh, you should remove the bad parts without throw out also the good parts. Uh, the bad parts that we would like to remove is the, the untestable business logic, is that the forms are monolithic classes that cannot be easily reused or tested. Also, we would, uh, we would like to remove the strong connection with the database and also and all the metadata gathered from them. Also, the good part to retain is obviously the speed of development and a few lines of code needed to do things. So we want to, let's say, to clean the RAD approach to make it more suitable for 
modern architecture application. So let's see how Delphi can fit in the modern architectures. Delphi is perfectly capable to support modern architecture. The real problem is the bad part of the RED approach is not tied to Delphi, but the, is tied to the RED approach. So the mixing of UI, the presentation logic, and business logic in the same class, which very often is a form or a data model. Uh, removing the bad part, uh, we can go further to create a real modern architecture uh, on where we can build on for go to the uh, big, big system or architecture. Removing the bad part, we can improve the current application, making it easier to develop, to debug, to evolve and test. At this point, we need to introduce the table model design pattern. A table model design pattern is uh, used to handle business logic. A single instance that handles the business logic for all rows in a database table view. A table model organizes domain logic with one class per table or view in the database. And a single instance of the table model object uh, contains the various procedures that will act on the data. A table model is designed to work with a data set like structures. This is very important in our needs. Uh, let's see the table model design pattern in a bit more detail. This is the process uh, that uh, is used to use a table model. So the first step is that the client issues a query to a database to create a data set. That's it. Set a SQL common, execute, get a data set. Then the client codes, creates a specific table model object and pass it the data set as arguments. So we have this data set, then it's passed to a table model object in the constructor, for example. The client then can invoke operations on the table model to do various things. Uh, just consider the data set always available. This is the perfect match with Delphi RAD approach. Now it is time to introduce Columbus Egg for Delphi. Columbus Egg for Delphi is an open source framework for Delphi developed by uh, BTime professionals and is a framework based on table model design pattern but adapted to be Delphi friendly and database centric. Uh, this framework provides all the good alternatives to do the common Delphi practices which makes your application hard to test in a testable way and provides observers and listeners to avoid all the business logic code in your form. And the most important things, retain almost all the good of Delphi Rad. Uh, let's check this example. Uh, we have a very simple application with a form DB navigator, DB grid, and some labels, which show a um, database table. But now we have to add some business logic. For example, uh, we have we need um, a piece of the user interface that show how many people lives in California. Also, we must ensure that contact first and contact contact last contains some data in the update or in the insert. We must ensure that Italian people cannot be deleted, and if current customer is Italian. The UI must show a label to clearly inform the user about it, like is shown in the screenshot that you see. New customers are Italians by default. So as you see, uh, now we have a set of business logic that must be implemented. But in an application like this, where you should put the business logic? So, how much business logic code is required in the form of data model to implement the requirements using Columbus Egg for Delphi? Zero line of code. Nothing. There is no need to put logic under the forms or under data models. 
Okay, but talk is cheap. Show me the code. Okay. This is our application. As you see, we have a fire that connection on the form, query in the form, data source, and uh, the component for the cursor. As you see, this is a really, really rad approach uh, application, okay? All the components on the form, uh, there is no separation, and so on. Uh, now, if we try to implement the business logic that we uh, talk about, in the slide, uh, we should add uh, event tender on the query, event tender on the data source, maybe. Okay, and all this logic will be mixed with the user interface and will not be reusable, will not be tested. It's really, really bad things for complex application, for big application. So let's see how the Columbus egg uh, can save us from, from this. So um, as first step, let's check the application running. So here we have uh, our data DB grid that show the data. Uh, if we uh, check this, we see that four person lives in California. California, if I try to uh, change the state province for someone for it becomes five person lives in california okay so when i go on italian person i see current customer is italian this is another requirement then i can try for example to remove the contact first and contact last from some contacts and then try to save but I get an exception. First name and last name are mandatory. So that's it. Also, this uh, requirement is implemented. If I try to add new uh, new customer, I get by default an Italian customer with IT and country Italy. And also, I cannot delete Italian people. Delete record. Okay. I get an exception, you cannot delete Italian customers. Okay, all the requirements are implemented. Let's check now how these requirements have been implemented. Okay, if you check the main form source code, you can see that it's almost empty. There is a initialization code, uh, there is uh, some uh, visualization code, but this is not logic. There is no uh, decision. There are no decision here. There is no if. Hmm? Uh, it's just a setup code and then visualization code. To understand how the thing works, let's check where is the actual uh, business logic. Obviously, the business logic is inside this customer model, which is a Columbus model, which inherits from a custom Columbus model. This custom Columbus model is our base class, which provides uh, a, a set of functionalities usable to implement our business logic in the correct way. So our um, customer model received the uh, data set to work on directly on the constructor. Then this the customer model hooks a set of, uh, um, let's say, methods which are connected to their corresponding um, event tender of the data set. So that you have the after open, before delayed, before post, after delayed, and so on. But these are not event tender. They have the same name, but are not the event tender, are methods, as you can see. So you, if you want to handle the after open of the data set, you have to override the after open method. If you want to uh, handle the before post even tender, you have to override the before post method. 
what is the benefits? Um, let's check the the source code. As you can see, this code is completely clean. Works only on data set. There is no uh, mix with the user interface. The after often, for example, start the calculation of the um, people which uh, lives in California. But how to bring some data to the main form? How to come back to the main form to have some data? Our customer model acts like a subject in an observer, observer design pattern so that you can uh, call this Cal California person which frees the data set then unfreeze the data set and then there is a loop to calculate the people which lives in California. Then you have these people in California property filled with the correct value. But how to bring this value to the main form without uh, uh, incorrect uh, dependency loop? Using the observing. So that when you want to uh, instruct the form or the subscriber uh, about some changes, you can just call notify observers. This notify observers calls all the register, all the observer registered with this uh, method call, in this case, self. Self is the form which implements the Columbus observer. Columbus observer is an interface which implements just one method, update observer, so that here I have implemented the update observer. Here the update observer gets the sender, which is the custom Columbus model, and also the model name, which actually start these updates. So that here I can just get the data from the my Columbus model and put in the user interface. That's it. It is always one way. Get the data from the Columbus model and then put it on the user interface. So that if I want to uh, put these um, people in California uh, in, the, in the caption of this label, I can just write something like this. I can cast the sender as customer model and that read it. The same also here. I'd obviously uh, also cast the key, uh, the sender before um, just one time and then uh, reread, reuse the same reference. But as you can see, your user interface is really, really simple. Your code under the form is really, really simple. All the mechanisms, all the requirements are implemented inside the customer model. As you can see, in the before delayed, methods, I have my check. If is Italian customer, then you cannot delete Italian customers. Or also in the before post, if data set, field name, contact first or contact last are empty, then exception. The same also uh, here on the new record. On new record, I can set the, um, the new value for the records. Once you get all the mm, logics inside your Columbus model, you can do a unit test. In which way? Uh, how? Uh, because you can create the customer model, this customer model, using a memory data set. So that you can start unit testing your business logic. Also, if you have a RAD style approach application, you can use unit testing. Also, if you just dropped your component on the form using Columbus. So let's see how to implement uh, um, unit testing for these uh, uh, logics. I've already did a sample here in the project. Primer, unit test, Unit test, the Unity project. This is a DUnitix uh, project, enhanced with test insight, 
which is really uh, a must to do unit testing in Delphi. So I wrote a small, a small unit test about it. Here I have uh, the test inside console. I created my uh, test in the setup methods. I had set up a memory data set with only the fields that uh, are involved in the business logic. I don't need all the note field, all the uh, all the fields that are not related to uh, logic, to the business logic. So once I created the data set. I have just created the customer model passing the dataset itself. And then I can start to test all my feature. For example, test default for new customer is quite simple. Open, insert, then I'll just check if the uh, on new record did its work. Or test is Italian customer. Open dataset. Then populate the set. Populate the set. Insert a bunch of fixture data into the set, and then checks if uh, uh, selecting a, a, a customer from the USA. I can check that is uh, Italian customer is false. Then I locate an Italian customer and check that is Italian customer is true. Or also test mandatory fields. I can open insert and then if I try to do a post I should get an exception with the text the first name and last name are mandatory or also uh, if we try to test calculate uh, California people open the data set populate data set then check that there is two people in California then go to the last record check that the people in California are still two Insert a California people are equal to, then delete the current record, which is a Californian people, and then are equal to. Uh, as you can see, uh, here you can check really all the business logic related to your data set and also to multiple data set with the same approach. Uh, once you have your um, unit test in place, you can just test your application. For example, if I change my uh, logic, for example, Cal California person, F for something wrong, uh, something wrong, I, I start to write something like this. I can check all the my all the tests that fades expected do but got zero or also if i change for something reason for some reason the the initialization value for the records for example here will be ta save and then my test fails i don't have to run my application and clicks and use the application to check the error i have all automatic um, unit testing in place. Beside the business logic, you can also test uh, how much frequently the user interface uh, is updated. For example, here in the test, I've also tested the notification to the form or to the subscriber. There is this specific observer, which is called Columbus Mock Observer, which gets just a, a, an anonymous method, which is uh, the update observer called. If you, if you see here, this Columbus Mock Observer implements Columbus Observer and the update observer just call the anonymous method passed in the um, constructor. So I can register a, a custom observer like this and check if in a specific moment the um, observing 
is called, the notification is called, because I know that when the notification is called, my form is also updated. So in this case, I set this L called as to false, then open the data set and check if it's called. Then I can reset the value. I uh, don't want in the scroll to be um, the update observer called, so I can call next and check that L called is really false. In case of new customer, um, L called is is uh, uh, should be true because the update observer is actually called. And so I can test also the updates to the main form. Let's check now another more complicated example. Here in the samples folder, there is a Columbus application which uses data models and um, data set connected in master detail relationship. As you can see here, you can design your form as you want, and then your application works as you expected. There is always the number of person lives in California. There is the number of the sales for that customers. And then there is the total sales for that customer. Then there is also the possibilities to export the list of the customer here, for example, customer.csv. I can go to my desktop and just open it in Excel. Or also here I can start to do some geocoding to get the latitude and longitude like this. How it is implemented? It is not complex at all because in the in the main data model, in this case, I have created the model. If I need uh, more uh, services inside my model, in this case export service and geocoding service, I can just inject it in the model using the normal mechanism. I can use a dependency injection container or so on. Here in the example, to keep the things simple, I just inject it in the constructor. And I can use uh, this uh, service using an interface, I export service, I geocoding service, to uh, to uh, to do some uh, something that are um, external to the business logic. They are services. Okay. Also, all the um, Columbus model can be talk each other using the property models. These models is indexed using the name of the Columbus model. If not a specific name is defined, is used the class name as a string. So that in this case, you can read the data set value from another model, another um, Columbus model, so that you can also read information from other models. This is not the data set itself, but is the model. Also, if in this case, I just want to read the record count of data set, okay? You should not uh, um, directly modify the data set. Um, in terms of services, I have uh, here the export to file, export customer calls just export to file of the data model. The data model here calls the export to file of the customer model. The customer model dot export to file asks to the service the save to CSV, the data set, and then talk with this UI listener and ask for a UI message dialogue. What is this listener? In some case, um, you need to ask something to the user when uh, you are inside some elaboration or when you have just finished some kind of elaboration.
But if this elaboration, um, it is not on the form, in the form, you are tempted to use the show message or the message dialogue inside your model or inside your data model. And this is really wrong because you, uh, in this way, you stop the possibility to use the unit test. So this UI listener is an interface which um, provides some, uh, some uh, standard dialogues uh, which uh, makes the which do the possibilities to mock this UI listener, so that you are just asking for a service. But if if this that service is not available, just is go um, uh, go straight to the next step. So uh, also using these dialogues, uh, the your customer model is still testable. Okay, the UI listener is also mockable and can be implemented also in a um, synchronous or asynchronous way to be used also on mobile. Okay, then the same mechanism are um, are implemented. Okay, Linux. <laughs> so the code. So we can uh, draw a summary line. So what are the benefits of Columbus Egg for Delphi? Uh, there are many different benefits. Uh, the first one is that forms and data models are free of business logic code. Uh, Columbus Egg for Delphi provides a single point for the business logic. And you can do unit tests just because it is um, simpler to do it. Business logic can be unit testing using in memory data set and dialogues can be mocked. Uh, you can still use the RAD approach to design your forms. Obviously, incrementally, you can also decide to completely separate uh, the data set uh, and um, database co with, uh, from the database connection and, and use some sort of virtual data set or list of objects, which is um, uh, very, very better than data set, but you can also use data set. If your data comes from an application server, you can fill in memory data set or virtual data set and still use the same business logic because business logic is not tied to your interface. Also very important, Columbus Egg for Delphi can be used also in legacy application to improve their architecture at very low cost. All the code, all the core is Delphi 7 compilable. So you can just use this evening um, Columbus Egg for Delphi to move your business logic from your form to the, into the um, Columbus model. You can just create a Columbus model for each data set and move there all the events, the events related code. It is an incremental approach. You can change it to one data set at a time without problem. Okay, just a summary, a small summary. Automatic testing is a real value added to your system. Your, your system will really uh, benefit from them, and also you and your team will benefit from them. It will save you a lot of time, and time means money, as you know. Uh, business logic in the data set or form event tenders is evil. Avoid it. Please avoid it for middle complex application or even more complex. Use Columbus Act for Delphi to remove it incrementally if you want to follow this approach. Once you have a unit test, you will be a happier programmer. Um, Columbus X doesn't transform your application in a um, super modern application, but is good enough to start to do testing and to start to separate, separate concern and responsibility. Once you have separated responsibility, you can plan to go uh, to do other steps towards uh, um, ultra modern architecture. Also, Columbus Egg for Delphi Core support from Delphi 7 to 10.2 Tokyo. And uh, also the FireMonkey and mobile support coming soon. This is the uh, GitHub project where you can find the Columbus Egg for Delphi. And uh, that's all. Thank you for your time. We've got uh, Daniele on the line to uh, help with Q&A. Thank you, Daniele, for that amazing session. That was really, really good content there. I You're thought welcome. I got Thank quite you. a bit of it. 
Okay, so there's cookbooks here, or questions here about your cookbook. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's see. Which is a great book. I have, I think I have both of them. Do I have both of them? I don't oh, great. I have the ebook of one at least, if I don't have the, <laughs> the physical copy of both of them. Um, okay, so it's uh, your, actually, I looked up the, the question here about where the Columbus egg comes from. I looked, had to look that up. Apparently, that's a, uh, a term for something that's obvious once it's, uh, once you discover it, I was not familiar with that term. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was at the, the um, uh, I was in the site of a customer some months ago that had a lot of logic behind the form, behind the data model, and so he asked me for um, uh, 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 an answer about uh, how it can remove that. So I start to think about it. I start to think about it, and so when I uh, start to think this solution. I I just um, say uh, why I didn't think these years before, and this is a just Columbus egg, best name. Yep, yep. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting actually when you were describing this to me. I this it's the same thing as like you know that's the same that I've seen other architectures in the past that are hey this is how you make a Delphi code more testable. You're like yeah, but you're throwing away all the cool rad ability to get stuff done. But then when you showed this, it's like, oh my goodness, that's just brilliant because it is, it does make it very, it still lets you keep it rad and take advantage of all the rad productivity features uh, of Delphi, but then also makes it uh, testable. So it was like the really the perfect um, solution it felt to me because it does give you those advantages uh, without throwing out the, the, the benefits. Yes, this is the, the the good point of the framework. Is that, is that as the framework is quite simple, but the good point is that you have not to throw all the good rad part of the um, uh, of the of the ID because just uh, it is not testable. You can remove the not testable part, substitute it with something that is testable, and you can still use the rad. Okay, so question here uh, says I'm using a tree view with three levels. Tree view nodes are hard are hardwired in the code. Depending on the node selection, some parameters should be passed and processed. Parameters are in the records. What would be your suggestion to better implementation of this task? Could you use Columbus egg? Thank you very much. Um, yes, I think that you can create an adapter for the, just I'm thinking loudly, uh, you could uh, create an adapter on the tree view that just simply redirect the selection to the Columbus egg model and then you can do whatever you want on the set, apply uh, business logic and so on. The Columbus model, or uh, this uh, in uh, presentation is uh, introductory, but have also a, a, a set of services that you can just join uh, to put some non-standard component or not uh, data set related component or specific data set features uh, that are available only on the data model. So as you as you see in the in, in um, Columbus model, you have only T data set. So if you are using uh, FireDuck, if you are using Zeoslib, or if you are using whatever, uh, you can talk only as data set because I don't want to put all the details of the data set, the specific data set implementation because it's a, a really low level, it's not business logic. But in some cases you need to go down to the level to tweak the data set parameters. So Columbus model have a mechanism um, that publish services to connect to this low-level implementation. So um, the question is about the tree view. The tree view can be wrapped in a service so that the Columbus model can just talk with a, an abstraction, hmm? an abstraction that can be mocked and so unit tested, and uh, that's it. You can do all the all the benefits. You can have all the benefits from the Columbus X uh, without uh, without the, the drawback and without losing control on your user interface. Okay, that makes sense. I, I like the example you showed about how to um, 
when you were showing how to unit test it, right, and you built the, the in-memory data set with just the columns you needed. And I thought that was great because it's exactly, but that, that's always the hard part is how to unit test with data sets involved. And this makes it quite easy to do. So that's, that's fantastic. Yes, yes. This is one of the, I, I'm a really a big fan of Delphi and big fan of unit test. So I, I, when, when, I, when we write a server side application, we can do all the unit tests that we need without problem. The problem is when you are using RAD approach. So how to save the good part of Delphi and the good part, the optimal part of the unit testing. So we, we strive to, to find this solution that it, it seems good, good enough to do the, 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 the job. Uh, I, I'm not, this is uh, not related to your presentation, but I, didn't I see that you have um, so a video course now around your Delphi cookbook series? Yes, there is the video course. Uh, um, it's split in two parts. It's called Video Solutions. And, uh, it's, it's called Delphi Solution. Uh, the first part is, uh, has been already published. Um, I'm not the voice. Uh, <laughs> I'm not the narrator voice. I'm just uh, the, the man behind the contents, let's say, and um, in the next uh, weeks it should uh, should be ready the, the second part because the Delphi cookbook, uh, the first and second edition, goes very well, and um, there's been a very good uh, uh, interest on the community and, um, and uh, for the people. So uh, the editor decided to do also these other investments in the, in Delphi in Delphi stuff using my contents. Great. Columbus Egg is open source. You just published it, I saw, on uh, on GitHub. So everybody can go out and take a look at that, download that, and uh, start using Columbus Egg to unit test their uh, RAD applications. Yes, we can put it on get it uh, in the next uh, in the next weeks without problem. I, I try to I um, I plan to do um, live training in Italy in the next weeks. And maybe if there is uh, enough interest, uh, I, we can do also live uh, live sessions. Oh, great! I loved your comment, by the way, about that. Once you have unit testing, you'll be a happier programmer. <laughs> I think that's yeah, that's yeah, true. yeah. <laughs> because the, the what the uh, let's say the good old programmers say, I don't have too much time to write my tests. No, the problem is that if you don't have time, you had to write tests. If you can, uh, if you can lose your time, if, if you can waste your time, then you don't write tests because you surely waste your time. Yes, yep. Yeah. It, it, you know, it's one of those things. I think uh, Nick Hodges pointed out. It says that you're already writing unit tests when you're testing your code. I mean, when you're finding those bugs, th those are. That's the effort that goes into the test. You just write a bit of code that uh, exercises those bugs that you're tracking down, and it makes it reusable. So you're already doing the work. Unit testing is just about making that reusable so that you know you have a proof going forward. So when you look at it that way, it really makes sense because uh, it's all about making your effort reusable so that you get the benefit in the long term. Yeah, in the long term, already uh, um, uh, a safe, uh, a safe harbor, <laughs> the unit test, because your debug questions, your design questions are defined in a unit test. So if you don't remember how a, a, a piece of code should work, uh, what are the, the decision behind that piece of code, the unit test can help you. And the, these um, these frameworks, the Columbus X starts with this in mind, with, with, with these needs in mind, you should do unit testing also for RAD style application. Okay, well thank you so much Daniele for putting this together and uh, sharing it with us. Thank you. Great session, uh, I'll get the replay on, available it's online shortly and uh, looking forward to seeing more about Columbus Egg. This is I think a uh, it's like a, every now and then I see some of these uh, frameworks like Columbus Egg that are really simple, very specific things. It's like, oh my goodness, that's just like an indispensable part of uh, software development. It's just like this it, This is a game changer. So, Okay, thank you so much, Daniele, and uh, good luck with your uh, books and uh, your the video course and uh, your, 
your trainings and stuff like that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.